Hey, what's up guys? Jag from Jaggy Sports here. And it's about that time, April 20th. Happy 420 day. Um, for all those people who do the 420, I don't. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, last night, Suns versus Pelicans. My, oh my, what a game. And I did not suspect that the Pelicans could take them. Um, I was texting my buddies all, all night and I, I was stunned, right? I had no idea, but um, I did know that Pelicans are a good team. Willie Green, I, I next to Ty Lue, he's one of the, my favorite coaches, right? Because they can get the job done. And what he has done um, this year, besides the Boston coach, Oduka, besides that... Um, He's played, uh, he's coached a phenomenal team and, you know, it just goes to show you that uh, Pelicans ain't no joke, 100%. <clears throat> and I know people are thinking Devin Booker got injured, he's got the hamstring, he's out. I don't think he played in the second half. Um, still, right, the, even throughout the game, Pelicans were in there and, you know, it's only till the end that's when they stretch the margin right there so check this clip out tell me what you think can the pelicans win the next game I i'm not going to say the series i'm not going to say the series because the thing is we don't know about devin booker and his injury i doubt he plays in game three when it's heading over to uh the Pel uh, new orleans nolans um but uh no it's uh tell me what you guys think Will the Pelicans beat the Phoenix Suns in Game 3? Check this clip out. Sun star Devin Booker exits their Game 2 loss with a right hamstring injury. Booker didn't play in the fourth quarter after the, with the Pelicans after scoring 31 points, all coming in the first half. He sustained the injury with 445 left in the third quarter, a period in which he went 0 for 1 from the field. Booker missed seven games in December with a left hamstring strain. He also had a left hamstring injury last season and missed four games. Suns coach Monty Williams was asked about Booker going down. All of these games are so important, but no matter how you slice it, it's 1-1. One, one. You know, we can, you know, I'll, I'll whine and, and feel bad about it tonight, but we're 1-1. One, one. And it's, it's a long series. Um, we get to go to their place and, and you know, We'll do what we do. We've been really good on the road, historically good on the road. We've played without Chris and Book before. If we have to play without Book, next man up. And we've, we've done that all year long. Do the Suns need a healthy Devin Booker, Christopher, to beat the Pelicans? You know, uh, I think they certainly need a healthy Booker not to be sweating against the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. huh. You know, one thing about the game last time you got to keep an eye on, they were losing when he got hurt, 77-74. So the idea that somehow this is the reason why the Pelicans won game two is a, it's not fair because they did trail after he had 31 in that first half. And the other thing I would say about, about the Suns, won seeds who won 64 games, eight games more than any other team in the NBA. And in the history of the NBA, if you've won not many than the rest of the league, you win a championship. You're not supposed to be 1-1 in an 8-1 series, okay? Uh, you know, it, it, when you're playing the eighth seed who won 36 games, who were 1-12 and 3-16, and and you know, the fact that, ah, no big deal, we're 1-1. No, 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 no. It is a big deal because the, the Suns now are going to be in a war with this team. This team's got a little moxie. This team beat the Clippers on Friday night when they were dead, down by 13 in the fourth quarter, and they came back after they blew a huge lead. Tremendous job in that scenario. They had a bad game one. They came back last night. They were down at the half, and they won the game going away. And Ingram, I don't care what anybody says, that guy... He is – now, listen, he hasn't done anything yet either, so let's not go crazy. Let's not say what I just said regarding Tatum and Butler. Ingram's a tremendous player. And he is capable of making this a very long, difficult series for Phoenix. And I'll tell you right now, Steve is wrong. If Phoenix doesn't have Booker, they're not getting to Golden State. They're going to be picked off by somebody because they're not that good without him. He, he, they don't have a lot of offense. Paul is up and down. Bridges is not a great offensive player. The center is getting outplayed by Rasha Lunas. He's getting outplayed by, 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 by the Pelican center. Clatter can't shoot. If they don't have Booker, they're going to have a lot of trouble the rest of this series. Now, I think he'll probably play. 
And, you know, New, New Orleans doesn't have a lot of experience. And, you know, like Minnesota last night, they got a little too happy with their first win. They didn't show up for game, three, game two. I'm not, I don't completely trust the Pelicans, but the idea now that the Suns are going to just roll off, no big deal, we, we'll win without Booker, they're not supposed to be 1-1. Okay, when you're an eight, one seed with 64 wins, this should be quick. And now they put themselves in a war. That's a bad sign for Phoenix down the road. That's what I'd say about that. You know, I could belabor, you know, your, your, your ridiculous take that you just gave. What's well, ridiculous? By pointing out the multitude of times an eighth seed has won a game in a series and stuff like that. I, can, I remember when Michael Jordan and the Bulls lost to B.J. Armstrong and the Charlotte Hornets. You know I remember a lot of things that's happened. In the, I remember when Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers lost by 40 to the Boston Celtics in an NBA Finals game and came back and won the daggone series. So I love how you try to act like, you know, just one game. I mean, it shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't should be, should be this way. It shouldn't be this way. I love how you try to do that. Well, the Lakers, you know, I said, the Lakers are the eighth seed? The Lakers are the eighth seed against hold, Boston hold, in 85 on, game one? Hold on, Go hold on. Don't, don't, don't interrupt me because I'm getting to somewhere. You know, Doggy, one of the mistakes, one of the worst things that happens with you is that, see, I listen to you. You see, see, I'm listening. I'm scouring through Mad Dog Radio sometimes. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm listening. You know, and when I hear your bizarre takes, I remember the other day, I just couldn't believe that I, 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 what I was hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mad Dog Russo hosts a radio show. He has his own channel. It's a sports radio show. And you know what he spent damn near a half hour on? Ben Franklin. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> ben Franklin <laughs> talking about the, the, the I mean, that's the a great documentary. And electricity. Right. The, that, that's what he was talking about. This is Mad Dog Russo. I mean, just he's, he's out there. He's just out there, okay? And you're out there now. Because let me tell you something. The Phoenix Suns, led by the best point guard, the best pure point guard in basketball right now, who's approaching 37 years of age, is Chris Paul. That's the leader. Last time I checked, Mikel Bridges is a top two candidate. He was my vote for defensive player of the year, even though I'm happy for Marcus Smart. DeAndre Aiden is no scrub. You know, Cameron Johnson and those boys can play. And I'm telling you something right now. I'm not concerned. I, I respect the Pelicans. I respect the young talent that they have. If Zion Williamson was there, I'd feel a little differently. But without Zion Williamson, I don't expect the Phoenix Suns, with, with game preparation available to them now that they know Book is going to be out, to lose this game or this series. I don't expect it at all. I expect the Phoenix Suns to finish the deal in the first round. I expect the Phoenix Suns, with or without Devin Booker, to beat Utah or Dallas. Ain't going to beat Golden State. I'm not picking them to beat Golden State with Devin Booker, okay? So I damn sure ain't going to do it without him. That's where I'm at with it, and I don't see why on earth you would think that the Pelicans, of all people, would take out the Phoenix Suns. You're showing no respect whatsoever at all, right. period. Basically, um, people saying uh, Pelicans can win. Uh, I don't think a lot of them are saying that. But, hey, you know what? Um, this Pelican squad is amazing. Uh, what they were doing, and if you watch the, the game itself, they put in a lot of rookies. And those rookies were getting the job done defensively as well. So, you know, um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say the Pelicans are going to take game three. The Pelicans are going to take game three just because of the fact that A, Devin Booker is injured. I doubt he plays. B, um, CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, those guys were insane, especially Ingram with 39 points. Guy, guy looked like, look like a young Kevin Durant out there. And you know what? You cannot count these guys out. I know a lot of people didn't feel that the Pelicans would win a single game. Well, I guess what? They proved everyone wrong yesterday. I know the injury to Devin Booker helped a little bit. But you got to give credit to where credit is due. The Pelicans, um, they're a phenomenal team right now. Phenomenal young team, up and coming for sure. That CJ McCollum trade was a stroke of genius. That that was a trade of the uh, 
year pretty much um and uh you you know zion williams is sitting out and if i was you know, zion williamson if i was zion williamson i'd have a change of heart i'd want to stay in new orleans tell me what you think will the pelicans take game three this is jag from jaggy sports